So that's what New Zealand used to sound like. And we got a plan to get it back. Now, my, uh, the way I got involved in this was kind of unusual. After the Christchurch earthquakes, we had to move house got a place that was absolutely infested with rats and possums, and quite selfishly, I just wanted to get rid of them. And we absolutely nailed them. Now, the next couple of years, <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Next couple of years, we noticed the bird volume was just going up and up, and I'm like, man, that's kind of cool. And then I started to get really interested in the area. Um, and then I found out a couple of things. I knew things were not so good, but two things that really quite shocked me. So one is New Zealand's the second worst place in the world in terms of species loss. Forget about the people that are, you know, um, hunting and, and chopping down forests. We're, we're one of the very worst. Now, the thing that shocked me even more is that 70% of what we've got left is still either endangered or in decline. And if you had to describe New Zealand's way of doing conservation, we've done lots of good stuff, but it, it, instead of an ambulance at the bottom of a cliff, it's kind of like an intensive care unit with species raining down on it. And it's not because we don't care, it's just that we were our own island for 70 million years and they didn't cope to evolve with mammals. Um, so an overseas ecologist described it really beautifully. He said, uh, parts of New Zealand are like a cathedral without a choir. They're basically rat-infested dead zones. Um, and New Zealand really is quite different because we were so isolated for so long and lots of other places, species came, ca came and went and you say, oh, well, you know, just let them get on with it. But us, at the moment, our 70 million year old uh, ecological heritage is just being eaten. So as a, a little bit of a geeky tendency, um, I was like, well, just me thinking it is getting better is no good. So what about if we had a little cheap way that we could actually measure this data, upload it to the cloud, computers are good at it, so that we could very quickly, anyone could know, are things actually getting better or worse and what's working? So we, had, we created this little device out of a uh, used smartphone um, so obviously because it measures the cacophony, which is what Captain Cook got when he got here was a cacophony, um, and we call this little device a cacophonometer. Now, when we weaponize it, we'll probably call it a, a cacophonator. Um, <laughs> now, this th it then got me thinking, and again, showing my geeky tendencies. So I was thinking about if you use the ultimate information technology, how much better could you make trapping? So we think you can make it 80,000 times better, which sounds crazy, so let me explain. So instead of using food, because animals can only smell over like three to five meters, but they can hear up to 10 times that distance. So if you can lure them with a sound, then potentially one trap can cover 100 times the area. And instead of the bait going off every couple of weeks and having to rebait it, you can make it solar powered, make it last a lot longer. And potentially you can have one trap that can do all of the predators instead of lots of different ones. And then you can dramatically increase the catch rate. We've had cameras sitting in front of some standard traps and we're getting catch rates as low as one in a hundred times we'll see a predator walk past or interact before it actually kills it. So I'm used to things where you can just make a little bit of difference. So this one I'm kind of like, it's a really big interesting problem and there's a big set of tools that hasn't really been applied to it. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, social lures as opposed to food lures. So, you know, once you've got a full belly, what's next on the list? A little bit of social interaction. Um, <clears throat> now, they all talk to each other in, in various ways. And the, the uh, social lures are particularly interesting for a number of reasons. One is they're very, uh, they're very species specific. Um, you can also... Um, you only have to lure half of the population, just the males or the females, and potentially you can get rid of the whole lot. Um, and, you know, one of the other things is that the hardest thing is to get rid of the very last predators. And with social lures, what happens is when you're trying to get rid of the last, it's actually a food-rich environment, but social lure interaction becomes even more important, so they should work even better. And one of the reasons I really quite like it is people say, hey, Grant, what are you working on? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm thinking quite a lot about possum erotica, actually. <laughs> um, now, um, you got. Oh, yep. So, uh, one of the things you have to be able to do if you want to get rid of uh, predators is you have to be able to identify them all. So, the standard ways at the moment are little chew cards and tracking tunnels, and uh, you can use cameras off the shelf, but they're kind of designed for uh, pigs and deer and things. So, we've um, created a camera that uses both a heat camera and infrared camera takes a video, uploads it to the cloud, so we can see exactly what's going on out there. So we need to be able to do this so that we can get every single last predator that's out there. 
Um, obviously, uh, we don't want to sit and go through all of those uh, images ourselves, so we've teamed up with some folk that are a lot cleverer than I who use the standard uh, artificial intelligence. So it's kind of cool, you don't even have to say what a possum looks like, you can just give it a whole bunch of videos and then eventually it looks like we can 100% identify the different predators. So we've now got a tool that can identify 100% of what's going on out there. Now what I'm just gonna flick into slightly different uh, tack, and this is just to say that there are lots of different people trying lots of different things. Our way is kind of cool, but just one I want to mention because people are so horrified by the idea is genetic modification. So there's actually gene editing tools out there that mean that they just produce uh, male offspring and they propagate through the uh, species, which could be a brilliant way to get rid of rats and mice. So I'm just mentioning that because our alternative at the moment is to have this ecological heritage eaten. So there's two reasons I'm excited about this approach. Uh, one of the first reasons is uh, something called Moore's Law. It just means that electronics and data just keeps getting cheaper and better and more efficient. What I'm talking about now, if I'd said it three or four years ago, you'd go, oh, that's kind of crazy and sci-fi. Now it's a few hundred dollars worth of bits. Eventually it could be so cheap you sprinkle it out of a helicopter. Um, it really is pretty cool. The other reason I'm really excited about it is um, we knew pretty early on that we weren't clever enough to do all of this, so what we did is I, we set this up with uh, David Lane, who's a bit of an open source guru, and Cameron, who's done a lot of the technical work, and we said, hey, here's what we're doing, um, and then all these intelligent people come out of the framework and they just start chipping in, and you're like, wow, that's kind of cool. Uh, it really gives you faith in humanity, actually. It's, they just all chip in. It's very, very cool. So just imagine a little device, say, the size of my fist that's sitting in the forest. Uh, imagine it's making little sounds to try and elicit a response, and then you go, ah, right, that's a male possum. We know it's a beach forest, it's in autumn, just after a full moon, the best thing to lure it in is this, lures it in, our camera automatically identifies it. The most likely kill mechanism is a little device that'll squirt poison on it, just enough to kill it, not enough for secondary poison, and that'll go off and then it'll go back into listening mode. Now, as we develop this device, every time someone makes a little improvement, it can go out to all of them, so that our devices can evolve faster than the predators. Now imagine we nail it and we get a device that can do everything. Now imagine that we've got quadcopters that go through the forest and drop lines of these things. And as they get rid of the whole lot, they drop them, move more on. Now that's not necessarily exactly how it's going to end up working, but it just gives you an idea that if we can conceive it now, um, you know, the government's just announced they want to be predator free by 2050. Um, I think that's kind of crazy. It's a sort of bold, uh, ballsy thing we should be doing as a country, but. The, the target's kind of crazy. I think we'll do it way sooner than that. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, 34 years in IT space, that's just, you know, that, if you project what we do normally, yeah, but if you're looking at this new stuff. Now, for a little bit of controversy, a little bit of fun on my part, not so much your guys' part. It took me a long time to get approval to do this. So, what we have in here is we've got nine uh, ship rats and about 12 Nor uh, Norway rats. And I say about 12 because sometimes they eat each other. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to show off a little bit of our technology. So we've got some ultrasonic uh, sensors out in the crowd here. Can I just have a little bit of lights here? <laughs> so, no, hang on, there's, I had to promise to do this health and safety thing. So. Um, I have, I'm going to give you an option to get out of it, so just uh, listen, listen carefully. So, the health and safety. If they run up you, they can scratch, but they've got antiseptic swabs out here. It's, un <laughs> <laughs> it's unlikely that you're going to be bitten, but they've got little booster shots. Now, <laughs> now the reason <laughs> that it's okay is these are the most common animals in New Zealand, and most people don't get to experience it. So I thought it'd be good that you get to experience it. So put your hand up if you don't want it, because we can guide where these things go. So put your hand up if you don't want it. You can, it's nothing to embarrass but it's not very nice. Put your hand up if you don't want it. Okay, you don't want it? Okay, because I'm going to get our tech guys to guide it where there's pockets of hands down. You can put your hand up to protect people near you. Yeah, okay. Rightio, okay. I'm not clever enough or mean enough to really do that. But what I wanted to give, <laughs> I wanted to give you a little experience because you guys don't want a rat experience. Our birds and insects don't want a rat experience. 
Let's get rid of them. Let's get our cacophony back. It's going to be beautiful. Thank you. Yeah.